Hello everybody, welcome to Merlin the Mighty and I have another random podcast video thing for you. I think this one might be kind of short because even after talking about Spider-Man for an hour, I still feel like uh, I don't know exactly what I'm going to say about the show. And that's particularly new or insightful. So in a way, that previous video was just kind of a, a way to delay talking about this, even though I want to, which is funny because I'll probably just upload this one first anyway. But uh, yes, I wanted to talk, as the title may suggest, about Invincible, because uh, this show came out back in 2021, and I believe there's a new season out now, so haha, it might be a little topical for me to talk about something like this uh, for once. <laughs> but no, I just, uh, I recently just, I don't know why I put it on, but I was just kind of in a mood to watch some superhero stuff and like some darker stuff. I don't know why, maybe it's just because I haven't. I'm like, okay, well, uh, like I want to watch the boys again. I try to get caught up on that and invincible's floating out there. I know Pluto's out now and kind of made me feel like I want to watch maybe one punch man again, or my hero academia get caught up on that. So I'm kind of like a alternate superhero sort of mood lately. Uh, but anyway, we put on invincible and, uh, my wife and I just started watching it and uh, I kind of, it's kind of funny because I went like almost two years like more than yeah more than two years with like basically no spoilers for the show like almost nothing like I saw the memes I knew a little bit about Omni Man I guess being bad or at least beating up his son uh, but beyond that I didn't know much I'd watched like part of the first episode maybe around the time it came out and I was like oh this seems okay but I didn't finish it I definitely did not finish it because I was like oh yeah this is seems pretty decent like kind of a more serious adult-ish superhero show like okay we've seen that before everything like post Watchmen or Dark Knight Returns technically if you want to talk about the comic like it's been that thing I guess maybe Kick-Ass was one of the things that started off like there's kind of waves of darker you know more subversive uh, post-modern superhero shows out there and I do kind of like them but I thought The Boys was good i liked the first season but it was just getting too dark for me by the second one it's kind of like what happened with black mirror i just felt like it was getting to be too much so i might try to go back with it again but uh yeah yeah i think that was actually uh pretty pretty good uh but in any case yeah i just put on invincible and uh yeah we just we kind of watched it all within i think two days the first season so i haven't i'm not 100 percent caught up with it but i think i'll probably start watching the second season soon and uh, it's it's kind of one of those things that sort of makes me mad. Like, you know, I sometimes I like to be like, oh, you know, I watched this thing. I read this thing long before it was popular. And there are some things I can say that about so I can, you know, be a be snobby like a comic book guy. Like, obviously, like, oh, yeah, I read The Watchmen and Dark Knight Returns and stuff before they became films or animated films. And you know, let's see what else was there. I was, uh, you know, I uh, watched. Uh, what was it? Uh, I think. Um, I mean, I knew about, uh, what was it, Parasite, the manga, before that was a thing. And, you know, I was into the JoJo OVA before they made a new one. I liked Hunter Hunter, the old one. You know, I didn't really care much about the new one. So I, I don't know if that really says anything, but it always makes me feel sort of special to like something before it becomes cool to like it, which is kind of silly, of course. I'm just glad that, you know, more people can appreciate something. But, you know, uh, the, the little ways you try to kind of uh, hold on to something make it feel special but yeah this was sort of another incident like that where i'm kind of surprised i didn't dive into this more because it seems like some sort of thing where i could feel more nuanced about like ha ha i was into this thing before it was popular but nope nope this is an example of hey i knew about invincible for years but all i knew about it was it was an independent superhero comic that was i guess darker and maybe more serious i don't even know if it was that violent but i just knew it was like a non-dc or marvel property that was like an independent comic or i don't know if it was image but it was like just uh you know it was semi-popular it had it had a following and it was still going i knew of it i saw it at the library I'm like oh invincible like i knew the suit i'm like okay but i never you know it's like powers or uh, was it why the last man just some of these big indie comic things that have become shows or or something lately that i just admittedly you know for for being as someone as cultured and appreciative of more obscure things uh sometimes i i will admit that i just kind of like to go with what i know and i like the darker more serious storylines that show up in comics but usually it's just dc and marvel stuff because i know those characters i'm used to them so to be fair i don't think i gave things like invincible a chance 
uh, just I wasn't drawn to it, you know. So like a lot of people probably weren't because I'm like, oh, it's not, it's not uh, Superman or Batman or whatever, and uh, I don't really ever feel like uh, picking it up when there's something else nearby. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll read that instead. So anyway, basically, um, long story short, I got into it because uh, <laughs> because of the show. And I might check out the comics. It made me want to check out the comics. So good job on the show creators for doing that. And I was kind of thinking this is clearly probably because uh, The Boys was such a hit. Because The Boys is a darker, hyper-violent, superhero-esque show, which I also really liked. Uh, the first season anyway, uh, and part of second season. But so I kind of have a feeling that this was a jump off point because of that show being so successful is my guess. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm not going to go too much into the plot because I have a feeling a lot of people watching this have probably already watched the show anyway. It might be more caught up than me, but I just want to give my thoughts on it real quickly. I feel like my cats are growling in the background. I don't know if you can hear that. Oh my goodness. They're fighting back there. Cats are mad about Invincible. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but um, it's distracted by their growling. Um, you know, no invincible, uh, you basically, yeah, it's just a, a superhero. Uh, there's this kid teenager, of course, and his father is Omni man, basically Superman, most powerful superhero in the world, basically a version of Superman flying around super strength and vulnerability, all that stuff. A uh, really powerful guy. He's waiting for his son. Who's like half Viltrumite, half Kryptonian, basically to gain his powers. Once he comes of age, he does. And he decides, I want to be a superhero like my dad. And he starts sort of training him. And, uh, like, I mean, spoilers, skip the next couple seconds here. If you haven't seen Invincible, go watch it. If you're even moderately interested, um, the, the, (laughs) I mean, this is old news, but like, I just, I had seen little clips, you know, to get myself into the show. I just saw random piece stuff, like how, how violent the show is. I'm like, wait, what? This is why people like Invincible. And I'll admit I was really intrigued. So I knew it was coming, but I showed it to my wife. She was like, I was worried she might think it's too much because sometimes I can't predict her with stuff like that. But she was like, oh, we got to watch the next one. What's going on? Like, it was, it's just kind of funny. <laughs> but no, I was just like, yeah, he goes and he kind of lures in basically the Justice League, the Guardians of the Globe, you know, like Wonder Woman, The Flash, Martian Manhunter, Batman. They're, they're, they're very obvious stand-ins for a lot of these characters. And he just murders them all with, like, really out... I mean, he does get worn down by the end, but he they don't really do much to him. Um, you know, they I guess they, they kind of wear him down and beat him up a bit, but, like, they do. Uh, but he, he just destroys them, like, punches through people, crushes their head, chops people's heads off with his arm, just, like, karate chopping people. It's like, just, like... Like, I, I guess I have seen some hyper-violent stuff like that, even in animated form, but... It was just so surprising the tonal shift, and then you see like the, the you know the the consequences of all the superhero devastation, and I will admit that upon watching like most of it, um, after a certain point, it does kind of lose its impact a little. Um, I actually kind of felt like towards the end it was just getting too dark when he starts like, you know, Invincible's trying to save certain people and it just doesn't work out, and there's just limbs remaining, or you know, Omni Man who is you know turns out to be evil and planning to like just basically destroy everybody because he's been playing the long game uh you know just trying to conquer these planets um crushing the like the the pilot's skull the kid of the one that his kid saved and just just thinking man he's terrible like just beating the crap out of his son and just yeah mark grayson invincible gets gets um really really beaten up a lot and (laughs) it's just it's it's a good show, and it really I look like the fact that our hero is not invincible, which makes me think is that a joke? Because like he's he's powerful, and I mean he's he's pretty impressive, but like there are other characters on the show, quite a few that are more powerful than he is, and he barely makes it a lot of the time. So I, I don't know, and that's actually the worst thing about the show. Like the show is great. The show is, I think, from what I've seen, like near perfect. I I love to sh- the show. But the way they just do those cuts into the title sequence of, oh, he's got to become, and then it just cuts to hard, hard cut of the title Invincible. It's never smoothly done. It's obnoxious. It, it throws the pace off. It's like my wife and I are watching like this. This is terrible. It's like it's a, a, a excellent show, but it's like that one thing that is just horribly done. And I don't know if it's intentional. It almost has to be, but it's just like, no, why do they do it like that? It's just so jarring. But 
you know, a lot of great voice cast. You know, J.K. Simmons, Mark Hamill's in there as the guy that makes superhero costumes. Uh, Stephen Yoon, I guess from The Walking Dead, voicing Invincible. Um, Sandra, oh, I think is his mom. So there's a really good cast. A lot of other great classic people in there. I love that they're just all these great supervillain types. You got your Dr. Seismic and the Mauler twins and Robot's a really interesting character. They kind of hint sort of a twist with him, but that's that's pretty good. Um, it was that, I, like that. I like there's a lot of good humor, but it, it is dark and it's intense and it's violent. But I am intrigued by it. I think it's well done. And uh, it probably feels like a new, fresh thing. But once again, this is something the comic was started like 20 years ago. So, you know, it's kind of like something like Game of Thrones where it's like, oh, man, it seems like this big thing. But like it's kind of been around for a while and people are just sort of appreciating it now. So once again, I think it's it's kind of about the medium. Like more people think that live action stuff, you know, has more weight to it. And so they're more likely to be drawn to it and take it seriously, even if it's something as silly as a superhero. And if it's like, you know, a comic book or it's like an actual novel or something, people maybe don't read as much because it takes too much time. And, you know, with everybody with their, uh, I don't know, like just with the hyper, hyper fixations and ADHD and everything in our, you know, all the social media and whatnot, and just technology in our faces all the time. Maybe it's harder to for a lot of younger people to just sit down and read something. But, you know, and so if it's animated, it's easier. And I'll admit, you know, it's it's easier for me sometimes. That's actually one reason why. I like to watch anime rather than read the manga, even though the manga would probably get me through the storylines quicker. I just like seeing all all the form together with the, the movement and the color and the voice acting and sound effects, soundtracks, just to create this bigger piece. Not that I don't, you know, not that I don't enjoy reading manga, but I often find myself gravitating more towards animated stuff anyway. But I'm also reading more, so I, I feel like that's one thing that... Uh, Amanda and I have been doing, which I really appreciate. So, you know, there is that. But uh, yeah, Invincible is quite good. Uh, if you like superhero stuff, darker superhero stuff, and you somehow haven't checked this out yet, I recommend it. But uh, yeah, I really liked it. And uh, I don't know if I'm going to do another little update after seeing season two, but I am curious about the comics though. So yeah, let me know your thoughts about it. If you were a fan of the show or a fan of the character in the comics before, and if it's doing it justice or if they're doing something differently that doesn't work, let me know. I'd be curious your thoughts. But uh, yeah, that's kind of all I wanted to say about Invincible is that I really like it and I'm finally watching it and I recommend it. All right, everybody. Thank you for listening. Stay magical.